There are two different ways that we can classify triangles. One is if we classify them by their sides, and then the other way is by their angles. So when we're classifying them by their angles, we have four different ways to classify them. We have a right triangle. A right triangle has exactly one right angle. Um, it would look something like this. Remember, we use this box here to show that it's a right angle. We would have an acute triangle where all of the angles are less than uh, 90 degrees. So each this angle, that angle, and this angle, all of them are smaller than 90 degrees. We have an obtuse triangle where one of the angles is obtuse. So this would be an obtuse triangle with this angle being the one that's larger than 90. And then we have an equiangular triangle. Equa meaning equal, angular meaning angle, where all the angles are the same. Okay. Um, and in a minute we'll talk about how you have an equal angular triangle also means that it's an equal lateral triangle. Now you can also classify them by their sides. So you have an isosceles triangle um, with two congruent sides. I like to remember the SOS in isosceles as same odd same. So this is representing the same, this one is the odd, this is the same. So you have two of them that match and then one of them that doesn't. So it looks like all three of them match. Let me draw that again. So these two match and this one doesn't. Then you have equilateral. That's where all three sides are congruent. And then remember these tick marks mean that they are the same measurement. And then scaling is where all of them are different. So you would have something like this. And you can note that they're all different because this has one tick marks, this one has two, and then this one has three. Okay, so if we're gonna classify these triangles, notice the first set of instructions just say by their sides. So since this one has two congruent sides, this one will be isosceles. This has three congruent sides, so this will be equa, and then you should double check. We're doing sides, so lateral is with sides. And then we have this one. Each one is different, so this one would be scalene. Now this next part is asking us to classify the triangles by their angle. So if we classify them by their angle, that's when we want acute, obtuse, right, um, or equiangular. So this first one, this is the part here that we're wanting to look at. I thought I was on highlighter. This is the part here that we're wanting to look at, is that right angle. So this would be a right triangle. And I abbreviate triangle and I just draw a triangle instead of writing it out all the time. This one, each one of these is the same measurement. This time it wrote the number instead of showing that they're congruent. I could do these tick marks or we could do multiple arcs to show that they're the same. So each one of them 60, so that means that it's equa, since we're doing it by its angles, it's equiangular. Then we have this one, we've got 56, 34, and 90 on the triangle angles. So because we have this as a 90 degree, so it's instead of using this box, they put the actual 90 degrees, but that still makes it a right triangle. Here, if we look, we've got 80, 45, and 55. All of those are less than 90, which means that this is an acute triangle. Here we've got 25, 25, and 130. That means that these two are the same, but that's we're not looking at same sides, so that's not what we want to be doing. These two are acute, the 25s are acute, and then the angle is 130. That's obtuse. So if you have one obtuse angle, this is an obtuse triangle. Okay. So one of the things that you looked at yesterday was this next theorem that we have. A theorem is something that you can prove. So when we say the angle sum theorem, um, we typically name it by what it's talking about. So the sum of the measures of the angles in a triangle are 180 degrees. This is the first few activities that you looked at yesterday to see that they all added up to 180 degrees. So we're gonna hold on the one on the figure on the left. We're gonna look at the one at the right. So if I want to find the measurement of angle one here, 
notice we have this is 50 and this is 55. So that means if I do 50 plus 55 plus angle 1, remember to show it's the measurement I use, that little m, that has to equal 180 degrees. Now, I want you to get used to writing equations um, because we're um, going to get into more complex equations. So if you practice with these ones that are easier, it will be helpful. So these two are like terms. So since these are like terms, I can add those two things together. So when I add those two things together, I get 105 plus the measurement of angle 1 equals 180 degrees. So now we want the measurement of angle 1 by itself. So that means I want to undo the adding of 105. Notice there's a little unsaid positive sign here, so I want to undo the adding. So to undo the adding, we subtract 105. So if we take 105 from 180, that just leaves us with 75. So the measurement of angle 1 is 75. And I'm expecting that your work looks something like this. You need that setup of that equation, and then you'll get your answer for this measurement. Now, we're not done here because it says find the missing measures. Well, angle 2 is also missing, and so is angle 3. Well, if you notice, if you look here, angle 1 and angle 2, they have a relationship that we've talked about. These two are vertical angles. So if you remember, there was a theorem that said vertical angles are congruent. So that means that the measurement of angle 1 is equal to the measurement of angle 2. So since 1 is 75, we know that the measurement of angle 2 has to be 75. Now notice here how I've marked both on my paper off to the side, but I've also marked on the diagram what the measurement is. That's to help me visualize things as I'm going along. This is one thing that you should be working on is that you're marking up your diagram. Okay. Then the next thing uh, we have is the measurement of angle 3. So we've got two of our three needed pieces of information. So I again I've got two pieces of information for this triangle. Well we just found out that there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So I can do 40 plus 75 plus this one that I don't know. So I'm going to call that the measurement of angle 3 and that's going to equal 180 degrees. So we've got 40 and 75 are like terms because they're both just numbers, so we're going to add those two things together, so that gives us 115. Plus the measurement of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. Well, I'm trying to get the measurement of angle 3 by itself. That means I want to undo the 115. So to undo the 115, I subtract 115. So if I do 180 minus 115, that gives us the measurement of angle 3 is 65. So now we have all three missing measures in this diagram that we had. That Notice it was two sets of triangles. Now, if we go back over here and we look at this left one, um, we've got um, three pieces of information. We know that angle F is 135 degrees. We know that angle G is 25 degrees. And we know that E is X plus 25. Well, we know that this angle plus this angle plus this angle has to equal 180 degrees. So I'm going to write that equation off to the side. So x plus 25 plus 135 plus 25 has to equal 180 because there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So I'm going to look and see, well, I've got these like terms. So if I do 25 plus 135 plus 25, that gives me 185. If you need to use your calculator, use your calculator. So here, we're trying to get the x by itself. If I want the x alone, I want to undo adding the 185. So to undo adding the 185, I need to subtract the 185. Again, you should be showing your work and setting up these equations um, as part of your work. So And practicing setting up your equations so that when more complex ones happen, that you can um, do those easier. So here, when we subtract the 185, we get x is negative 5. Now, um, x is negative 5. That's not the angle is negative 5. Notice if I plug x in, I would get negative 5 plus 25, so the angle measurement is 20. So I don't have a negative angle because that wouldn't make sense. So it just told us to find x. Now, if you look here, um, on my paper, it didn't interpret the... Um, 
it was supposed to say the measure of angle H. It didn't interpret the math very well when I had this paper. So, um, but our plan is still the same. In order to find the measurement of angle H, notice it's given to us as 4x plus 2. I first need to find out what x is. So I'm going to do 4x plus 2 plus the 2 plus 7x plus the 44. All of those added together gives me 180. So we've got 44, 2, and 2 are like terms. So if we do 44 plus 2 plus 2, that gives us 48. And then if we look at our x values, um, we've got 4x and 7x, which gives us 11x. So I'm going to undo adding 48. Uh, to solve equations, you want to undo the order of operations backwards. So you first want to get rid of add, subtract. So I'm going to do 180 minus 48, which gives us 132. Now I want to undo the timesing by 11. So to undo timesing, we divide. So that gives us x is 12. Now, go back and look at our, our directions. It says to find the measurement of angle h. Is x equals 12 the measurement of angle h? No. So we have to plug x in to find out what h is. So we're going to do the measurement of angle h is 4x plus 2, but now we know what x is, so we do 4 times 12 plus 2. So we're going to plug 12 in place of the x. So when we do 4 times 12, that gives us 48. We're going to add 2, that gives us 50. So our measurement of angle h is 50 degrees. Okay. Now, we also have another theorem. This theorem is called the exterior angle theorem. So what happens on the exterior angle theorem is you've got the measure of an exterior angle is uh, of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measure of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So this is one of the ones that you looked at yesterday in your activity. Um, when we talk about this part here, this is a little bit wordy, the non-adjacent interior angles. Remember adjacent means next to. So if we look here at angle three, can you see that this angle here is adjacent to it because it's next to it? So we want the two angles that are not this one in the triangle. So that would be measurement of angle one and angle two. So these are the non-adjacent interior angles. Sometimes these are called the remote interior angles. Okay. Um, so what this theorem is saying is that you take the measurement of angle one, plus the measurement of angle 2, and that has to equal the measurement of angle 3. Now, notice if you look, 1, 2, let's call this angle 4, so 1 plus 2 plus 4, I need my angle signs, has to equal 180 degrees, but notice 4 plus 3 has to equal 180 degrees because they're a linear pair, they're making this line right here. So if I've got 1, 2 plus 4, and 4 plus 3 equaling 180, that really means that I can set these two things equal to each other, right? Because they're both 180. So I can say 1 plus 2 plus 4 equals 4 plus 3. But notice we've got the measurement of angle 4 on both of those. I don't want green. So see how 4 is on both of those? So what we can do is we can drop that 4, so I subtract angle 4 on both of them, which means this goes to 0 and this goes to 0, so we get the measurement of angle 1 plus angle 2 equals the measurement of angle 3, which is what our theorem says. Okay. That's where it comes from. Um, we also have um, where there's the exterior angle inequality theorem. So if an angle is an exterior angle, so that exterior means on the outside, okay, then its measure is greater than the measure of either of its corresponding remote interior angles. So that's saying this angle and this angle, both of those are smaller than this angle right here. That's because remember these two are the ones that add up to 155. So if these two add up to 155, then both of those have to be less than the 155. That's what the inequality theorem is saying. Now, on this one, the question is to find x. So we know, and it might be good to mark this up on your picture, 3x minus 10 plus 4x plus 60 has to equal the 155. So again, we're practicing setting up our equations, so we're going to do 
3x minus 10 plus 4x plus 60 equals 155. So I'm going to look at my like terms. We've got negative 10 and 60 are like terms. So negative 10 plus 60 gives us 50. And then we also have like terms with 3x and 4x, which gives us 7x. And that still is equal to 155. So now I want to do my order of operations backwards. We're getting rid of adding and subtracting first, so I'm going to undo adding 50. So I'm going to subtract 50. So that gives us 105. Well, now I want to undo multiplying and dividing. So to undo multiplying, the, since the 7 is being multiplied, we want to undo that, so we're going to divide. So we're going to take 105 and we're going to divide by 7. So then x is 15. Now, I always want to go back and double check my uh, question and see, is it am I supposed to find an angle measure or am I finding the variable? So in this case, we're finding x, so I'm all done. These next two theorems you also looked at in your activities. If one side of a triangle is longer than another side, then the angle opposite the longer side has a greater measure than the angle opposite the shorter side. Okay. Um, that's wordy. So what that's saying, if we look here at this first triangle on the left-hand side, if we look here, we've got the 8 is our longest side. The 4 is our shortest side, and then the 7 is our medium side. So if one side is longer than another side, so 8 is longer than 7, then the angle opposite the longer side is greater than the angle opposite the shorter side. So that means that this is the biggest angle, because it's across from the longest side, and then this is the medium angle, and then this is the smallest angle. So you can essentially order your side lengths and then determine which angle is the smallest, the largest, and then the middle from that. When we look here at this next theorem, it's the converse theorem. Hopefully you remember that converse just means that you're switching the hypothesis and the conclusion, or you're switching the if and then then. So notice here we were talking about the side first, and then we found information about the angle. Here we're talking about the angle, and we find information about the side. It says the same thing, just the opposite direction. So if we look at this other triangle on the right-hand side, if I label my angles from smallest to largest, the smallest is the 22, the medium is the 50, and the largest is the 108. Now, the relationship is always with the angles across from it, so or the angles and sides across from each other. So the longest side is going to be this side, the DF. The medium side is going to be the EF and then the shortest side is going to be the DE. Now, notice it tells us to list, so I've got it on my diagram, but I don't have it listed. So here it says list the angles from smallest to largest. So my smallest angles cross from the shortest side, so that's angle C first. Then the medium would be next, so our medium is across from the 7, so that's angle A. And then our largest is across from the longest side, which is side 8, so angle B. Okay. Here we want to list the sides from least to greatest. So, oh, I didn't put my mediums, medium, small. So our longest side is the DF, but notice we're going greatest to least. No, that's what I was doing. It says least to greatest. So our least is the smallest. So our smallest is side DE. Remember, this is a segment, so we draw a segment above it. Then we have um, the medium, which is EF. Again, it's a segment, so I put a segment line above it. And then we have DF, which is the longest. Okay. So those are some of our theorems about triangles.